Hello summoners and welcome to another pro guides video. My name is Stray and today we'll be talking about how to deal with toxic players, as best as you can deal with them anyways. Yep. Before we get into it, our question of the day is what's the most toxic thing you've ever seen happen in one of your league games? Let us know in the comment section here or in our discord and as an added bonus, we're also doing a giveaway right now for anyone that subscribes to our YouTube channel and goes to the giveaways tabs on our discord server. 7 lucky winners will receive 1 year's worth of pro subscriptions and will also have 10 more winners who can receive each 2000 PG points each, which is a pretty sweet deal. Now without further delay, let's get going. So on to one of the most time honored questions in League of Legends. How do I deal with the toxic primitives who plague my games of League of Legends? Well, each toxic diaper baby doo doo head who can't control their emotions enough to play a video game has their own set of reasons and excuses for being a blight on humanity. So there are multiple answers to fit multiple flavors of garbage they present themselves as. The first method of dealing with toxic players is, of course, the mute function. Everyone and their mothers will tell you, just mute them, as if muting them will magically fix every problematic person you encounter in League of Legends. As boring and generic as it is though, muting will solve the vast majority of your problems with verbally toxic players in League. People can still be frustrating in champ select and in post game, but as far as in the game itself is concerned, you can choose to live in blissful ignorance, unaware of the dumpster fire your teammates are weaving around you. Contrary to what Riot support would have you to believe, muting people doesn't stop them from AFKing or trolling your games, so keep in mind this is only a solution for verbal harassment. In the same vein as muting anyone who seems like an issue, or even just blindly muting all at the start of every match, you can also just drag your chat off your screen so you can only see the very edge of it, unable to identify what's being said. This is effectively the same as muting all, but it stays where you leave it from one game to the other. So there's no risk of people whining and complaining your happiness away in the 5 seconds it takes to type slash mute all. That sounds like an exaggeration, but anyone who's played League for any length of time knows that such a feat is entirely possible for the League community. The important thing here is that you don't type back when people are being verbally toxic. Trust me, I know how challenging it is to just sit there and let someone be obnoxious, I know it's hard to resist flaming them back and putting them in their place, but you have to make a choice and commit to it. You have to choose LP over personal satisfaction because at the end of the day, these people are using chat as a coping mechanism or they're just deliberately trying to mess with you. And neither of those two factions will ever see something you say in chat and think themselves, man, they're right, I really should become a better person. They won't say that. Partially because that sentence has too many syllables for them to wrap around their baby raging minds around, but also because in each person's mind, they're the hero. And there are very few people on this earth that are capable of being honest with themselves and admitting to their own faults. So whenever you go to flame someone back, if you choose to take that route, do so knowing that nothing will change and you're choosing self-satisfaction over winning. And yes, I know we're all salty league players and most of us are spiteful enough to value making some jerk lose over making ourselves win, but you have to keep in mind that the number of players out there with no emotional control is nearly infinite, so you're just basically putting yourself on a treadmill by flaming them back. If you ignore them and just play, sometimes you get lucky and they just shut up and focus on their play. Or maybe if they don't shut up, they're at least only typing a minimal amount and focusing on the game outside of that. If you type back, you're only distracting them and yourself, so you're just reducing your odds of winning even more. On a similar note, I see a lot of you try to give your teammates helpful tips in the middle of a game or suggest ideas to your fellow teammates. Stop it. Just don't. You think you're helping and the idea of what you're doing is nice, but what you need to understand is that by giving someone advice, you have effectively told them that they're making a mistake and most toxic players are incredibly emotionally fragile, like 10 ply toilet papers level of softness. They'll interpret your remarks as toxicity and then just start freaking out even more. Sure, sometimes people are sincerely grateful for good advice, but those people are few and far between. Rolling the dice on encountering a decent human being with the mental fortitude to receive criticism is a bad gamble, and a lot of time you'll end up just setting somebody off, so just keep your eyes on the game and keep your mind focused. It's best not to type anything at all unless you're conveying information about the game. Our final note on the subject of verbal toxicity is that sometimes even though it stings your pride, you have to negotiate with the ELO terrorists. They'll throw childish tantrums and make demands and if you want to win, sometimes you have to play their game in their way. Playing with a cranky whiner sucks, but you have better chances of winning with a crybaby than you do winning a 4v5. So if you can afford to cater to their needs in game to make them feel better about themselves and their fragile ego, you should probably do so. 
sympathize with them, make them feel listened to, and do whatever you feasibly can to placate them. Sometimes there's nothing you can do, it's all case by case, but you have to act like they're justified in throwing their little fit so you can climb and leave them behind. Be the better person here. Now onto the more hard to punish forms of toxicity. These are the guy who run it down with Disco Nunu and play Tom Kench and use their E to ruin their carry's lives. This is your 07 Riven who rage quit top lane at 8 minute mark because she doesn't understand power spikes. The 010 Yasuo who starts feeding kills because surprise, bot lane Yasuo isn't as easy as the videos make it look. These guys will do whatever they can in game to ruin your experience or perhaps they simply don't care. Either way, this form of toxicity is the hardest for Riot to monitor and they're notoriously bad at finding a good way to deal with people like this. Bad words, unacceptable, but willfully ruining games that routinely take 20 minutes at least. Well, that's A-OK -okay in Riot standards. As with verbal toxicity, the best route you can take is prevention. If you get into champion select and you see somebody hovering Yumi mid, you can ask them if they want support. If someone is threatening you with Disco Nunu, ask if they wanted a different role to see if that's why they're forcing a dodge. If they're going to play Soraka top, ask to speak to the therapist. Do whatever you can to keep your teammates in a positive mood before and during your games, and you'll wind up with slightly fewer people running it down. Most people don't want to just int, usually they have some misguided reason for doing so, and they think inting will make them feel better so you just have to try and coddle them and make them feel a little bit better about themselves. So much of success in solo queue and League of Legends in general is about stroking egos and keeping everyone emotionally happy. Don't play the flame game, just play the game itself and if possible, shower your teammates with praise for every minuscule thing they do right. Is your angry support tilting out of their mind? Well, congratulate them the next time they make a decent play in a teamfight. If your jungler threatens to AFK if he's invaded again, offer to place a control ward at their jungle entrance so they know you care. It makes people feel understood when you show that you want to help them with whatever problem they have, and that goes a long way towards helping them calm down and focus on their gameplay. Now this is all well and dandy for toxic teammates who aren't over the edge and past the brink, but as we all know, some teammates are just unsalvageable. They might have had just a bad day, and this is how they vent, or maybe they're on a lost streak, or maybe they just take satisfaction in pissing people off. Who knows? But they're in your game and there's nothing you can do to stop them from running it down and feeding laners. If you are super lucky, you just happen to have a good 4v5 comp and the enemy doesn't punish your 4v5 properly so you can maybe eke out a win, but those situations are very rare. In regards to the dedicated inter though, I wish I had a better answer for you. The best I can tell you is just to buckle down, focus on your play and try to snowball and inspire a lead for your team. Maybe the toxic player will see that the game is winnable and have a change of heart and reform. Probably not, you know, but maybe it's possible. Most likely not though. As for those who have no interest in doing anything but feeding, well, sorry about your luck. Ultimately, there's nothing you can really do to stop a player who's determined to run it down. Riot's system can't detect it, and at the moment they're only reviewing cases if they're high profile, so all the intentional feeders are slipping through the cracks and continuing to screw up the games whenever they log in. Your only real defense against this is to use a website like u.gg or op.gg or Porofessor to scout out your allies in champ select to see if they've been running it down, but even that's not a perfect system. If you do see someone who's obviously been running it down the past few games, then yeah, of course, dodge. It sucks to lose LP, but better 3 LP than 20 plus. Sometimes if you're really unlucky though, they'll just sneak up on you and all you can do is roll your eyes and try not to get tilted so you can head into your next game untilted with a clear head. Maybe someday, Riot will follow through on their promises to improve the report system enough to detect these players, even if they're doing something as subtle as smiting away cannon minions or something, but I think developing their system to that level is a pipe dream. For right now, I'd settle for banning the obvious chain enters, so hopefully we get to see that by the end of 2020 like Riot promised. Thank you so much for watching everyone, hopefully something here has persuaded you to handle toxic teammates slightly better, and as a result, ends up gaining you some more LP in the future toxic encounters. Oh, and uh, remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel and join our Discord for our super cool giveaway. Once again though, let us know in the comments or in our Discord what your most toxic experience in League of Legends was, as we love hearing from you guys. Good luck on the rift everyone, and as always, stay safe and wash your hands. Stray signing out. Peace.